Welcome. So we have here our last possible combination in which we have a capacitor connected to an inductor with a switch. When we flip this switch, our capacitor will start with a maximum charge at zero. And since there was no initial current in the inductor resist current, our initial current will be zero at time t equals zero. And then the charge should flow eventually soon around this, and we'll see what happens to it soon after. So the next thing to do is to use the loop rule to solve this. We have two elements. We have a capacitor, which we can write as negative 1 over C, charge as a function of time. We have an inductor, which we can write as negative L, di of t dt. And since we only have two elements, that then equals 0. We can use that i of t is equal to dq dt to then say that di dt would be equal to d squared q dt squared. So using this, we can then solve for d squared q dt squared. We can do that by moving this term over and then dividing by L. So we get d squared q dt squared is equal to negative 1 over LC q as a function of t. So here is our then problem, our then thing to check from our loop rule. And we have a couple of ways of solving this. So it's always fun to see the lecture do it the wrong way. So let's explicitly state that we're going to be doing the wrong way and we're going to be doing it wrong. So one thing that we could try is we could try separation of variables again. If we do this, though, we have to recognize what the second derivative is. This is then the derivative function on our ratio dq dt equals negative 1 over lc q of t. This is a little bit tough because here is where our ratio is where we can do that separation of variables. And it's inside of a derivative. And then we would have to take the integral with respect to time of both sides, but we don't know what q of t is. It gets in a little bit of trouble. So this is not able to do because we can't perform separation of variables. But there's other wrong things we can do. There's other wrong things we can try. And we don't want to stop just there. So we can put, use or guess our previous solution. Our previous solution was that charge as a function of time was a e to the negative t over tau. And so what we can do after we've guessed that is we can follow through by finding what the derivatives of this are. We can find what dq dt is. And we would get a over whatever's in here, so negative tau, e to the negative t over tau. We could take the second derivative of this. And this would be a over positive tau squared, e to the negative t over tau. Everything's good. What we then want to do is then plug in our equation. So every time we see d squared q d t squared here, we would plug in a over tau squared e to the negative t over tau. Every time we see q over t here, we would plug in a to the negative t over tau. So we can do that. So we have a over tau squared e to the negative t over tau equals negative 1 over lc a e to the negative t over tau. So we have good news and bad news in this equation. Good news is, is that the e to the negative t over tau is on both sides, so we can cancel that, the a similarly. And so then we have the tau, 1 over tau squared equals negative 1 over lc. So we can just write that as tau squared equals negative lc, or that tau is equal to i times the square root of lc. So this is where it's just a matter of whether you feel like imaginary solutions are good and right and useful, or whether you 
still feel bad about them. Notice that, right, our tau is in this exponential, so we would have to have a exponential of an imaginary number in this, and that kind of feels a little bit rough, a little bit wrong. So that's then what we would say is not a good way to do this because, right, we require an imaginary solution. We want to think if there's something that could have a real solution, and one thing we can do is if we go back to our Euler and back to our understanding of exponentials, an exponential to the imaginary power results in a sine or cosine. So maybe our result might be better if we do sine or cosine. And if we think back to simple harmonic motion, this might give us a little bit of a understanding of what to do. In simple harmonic motion, we had the acceleration as a function of time which we can also write as the second derivative of position with respect to time, is equal to negative omega squared s as a function of t. And we can compare that with our equation that we just got from our loop rule. We got that d squared q as a function of time, dt squared equals negative 1 over lc, q as a function of time. So our simple harmonic motion solution is then that s as a function of time is equal to some s max times cosine of omega t plus phi. So then we've recognized that we need a sine or a cosine. The simple harmonic solution looks very, very similar to what we got from this loop rule. So we're saying our LC circuit solution must then follow the same math as the simple harmonic solution that we saw. So we must get that q as a function of time is equal to some, right, q max cosine of omega t plus phi. If that's the case then, we have this negative, we have this negative, we have, right, to the no powers or no derivatives, we have two second derivatives. So then we must have that omega squared is equal to 1 over lc, or that omega is 1 over the square root of LC, which is similar to what we got for this tau, right? But it's for our omega, so that seems fine. And so now we have our omega, and we need to figure out what our Q max and our phi are. Well, we have what the Q of time equals 0 should be. It should be equal to Q max cosine of omega times 0 plus phi. So omega times 0 is 0. Phi will be right whatever our angle is. And so then our, this must be equal to Q max itself. So then our phi must equal 0. We can do another check of this by looking at our dq dt is equal to i of t, which is the derivative of this. So we would get omega times q max cosine of omega t plus phi. And it's not cosine, it's negative sine or positive sine. Negative sine, sorry, yep. And then we know that the current at time 0 has to be equal to 0, which is equal to negative omega q max sine of 0 plus phi. So again, this has to be 0 because sine of 0 will give me 0, and few others will. And so we have that our phi or phi is equal to 0. So then our solution for our LC circuits is the charge as a function of time is equal to Q max cosine of T over the square root of LC. 
And so this circuit is going to act like a simple harmonic oscillator where the charge starts out in the capacitor and then over some time the capacitor gets entirely discharged. When that happens, the derivative of the charge, aka the current, will be at its maximum. And so there'll be a maximum amount of current flowing, but eventually there'll be too much charge on this one and the charge will flip on the plates. And then it'll discharge in the backwards way and continuing to oscillate between positive charge on this plate to positive charge on this plate and over and over and over again. So we found another application of our simple harmonic motion, and we've solved our last of our differential equation circuits.